All right, well, I said string comparisons were pretty weird. Let's talk about why. Uh, we're talking about F4.6 in this part of the textbook material. All right, so string comparisons are weird because letters have to be represented as binary numbers. Everything in a computer is represented as a binary number, whether it's text that I type or a picture of your dog or whatever. It's all represented as binary numbers somehow and then interpreted as whatever it's supposed to be. I type in text onto a Word document. I save it. it it's you know stored as binary numbers on the computer. And then I open that up in my Word document again. Word actually interprets that data and says, OK, I recognize all this as this letter and this letter and this letter and so on and so forth, and essentially reconstructs my uh, data from binary numbers back into letters. So that's kind of where string comparisons get a little bit weird. Now, we use Unicode representation to actually represent letters in a computer so that we don't have to engage with computers only using binary numbers we can actually store letters and then the computer converts them into binary numbers and all that kind of stuff the unicode representation is what governs which letter gets which number and every letter gets a unique binary number unicode is also the reason why we have emoji it's also the reason why we're able to handle um you know text that is left to right or text that is right to left inside of the same representation. It's why you can actually have um, emoji people of a lot of different skin colors even. That's all encoded as part of the Unicode representation. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on there and the people who are part of the Unicode consortium, they are troopers. Let's just put it that way. They, they go through so much. But here's the thing, is that computers have to differentiate between uppercase and lowercase letters because they're really not the same, right? If I type in my name, Iris Kohler, does it matter if I capitalize the I and the K or if I leave them lowercase? In the rules of English, it does because my name is a set of proper nouns, so they need to be capitalized. And, you know, forget about if I type someone's name in all lowercase, who's like super important and super like persnickety about that. And they get mad and all that kind of stuff, right? We have a distinction between uppercase and lowercase. Even if I type an email to a student in all caps, they would be freaked out because they would feel like I'm yelling at them, right? We need that distinction. Because of that, Uppercase and lowercase letters are given different binary values. They have different values under the Unicode representation, which means that uppercase and lowercase letters are considered different, even in Visual Basic. It has to be considered different. Visual Basic needs to consider different because it can't assume that you want to treat them the same, because what if there is a meaningful difference at some point? So it has to assume that you want them to be different. That's why the statement k, uppercase k is equal to lowercase k, evaluates to false. Uh, the statement str uh, string state equals uh, c a, but with uppercase c and lowercase a, that equality, and I'm not talking about the variable assignment here, that equality is true only for the string containing uppercase c, lowercase a. It would end up being false for uppercase C, uppercase A, or lowercase C, lowercase A, or lowercase C, uppercase A, all of those would be false because of that difference between uppercase and lowercase letters. Now we actually have some useful methods, two upper and two lower. Uh, the reason why those are useful is because, um, you know, the user might put in anything when we ask them to give us text. It could be any mix of capitalization. Even if we told them, hey, enter in, let's say, the state that you live in, in all caps, they might not listen because users just sometimes don't listen. And you have to assume that they will not listen and you have to plan ahead, which is why you can temporarily convert user input 
when you're trying to check for things. You can take their input, you temporarily convert it to all uppercase or to all lowercase, and then test it against your own all uppercase or all lowercase strings. And that gets rid of that weirdness with string equality. So we have our two methods. String dot two upper converts a string to all uppercase. And that's fine for a string literal or a string variable, by the way. And string dot two lower converts a string to all lowercase. So here's some examples. Um, I have a couple of if statements with the conditions inside of them. The first thing we can do, if we imagine a string state is something that we got from the user, we can convert it to uppercase by saying, you know, invoking the dot to upper method and test it against CA, which will work if string state contains lowercase CA or lowercase C uppercase A or uppercase C lowercase A. All of those would be converted to all uppercase and then we can see if they equal all uppercase CA. Now, really cool thing about doing this. When we invoke the, to, the dot to upper method right here, we're not actually modifying string state. We're actually replacing this whole sub expression, string state dot to upper with a new string. What happens? First off, Visual Basic takes string state, it looks up what the variable is holding, and it takes the data for that string and essentially substitutes string state out with the string that it's holding, whether that's uppercase CA or lowercase CA or whatever. Then it says it takes that string and evokes the dot to upper method in order to create a new string. It replaces that string dot to upper entirely with the string uppercase CA. So it's as if we typed in the literal uppercase CA. Except for the fact that string state might have anything in it. So if it had blah, uh, this whole thing would be temporarily replaced with all uppercase blah, like I'm yelling it or something, which I won't yell right now. But that's the cool thing is that string state is not modified. If we wanted to modify string state, we could say string state equals string state dot to upper but we're not modifying it when we just do this, which is great because we can preserve user input. We can keep everything the same while also temporarily doing that conversion for our checks. So it's really helpful. We can also do it for string comparisons. If we get two names from user input, string name one dot two lower equals string name two dot two lower. That claim is great because we can take the entire name and then lowercase it, take the other name, lowercase it. It doesn't matter about the capitalization, uh, re you know, differences or anything like that. We just check the letters themselves, uppercase or lowercase. It's really helpful. We have another example where we're actually uh, setting a label, uh, that text property to string state dot two upper, no matter if the, you know, user put in whatever, we can convert that to all uppercase to do the proper state abbreviation and then stick that in the text form right there. Uh, again, string state dot two upper, it doesn't modify string state. It just, essentially it's as if it replaces this whole thing with whatever string states string actually was, but all uppercase and then sticks that in label state dot text. And then we have some examples of using to upper and to lower to modify a variable's actual um, value. So string name equals string name dot to upper that actually changes string name. String name dot to upper doesn't change it by itself, but then we take that value and then set string name equal to that value. We put that value inside a string name and now the weird name with weird capitalization and all that kind of stuff is completely replaced by that name, but all uppercase. Similar with text state dot text equals text state dot text dot to lower. We're taking the state, we're lowercasing it, and then we're sticking that into the state. Uh, in this case, we're just doing it directly with the uh, text boxes property. We're, we're actually just uh, taking what the user typed and replacing it with lowercase just to mess with them or something like that. But that's, an option that we have. Now another issue is spaces. Users might add spaces before or after their entries. 
So the string containing LA is not equivalent to the string containing a space followed by LA. Um, because that space, what happens is Visual Basic actually checks string equality character by character. So it will compare the L with the space and that'll evaluate it to false. Similar idea if we had LA compared to LA space. L is equal to L, so that's good. A is equal to A, but then the second string has that space at the end and the first string doesn't have anything, so Visual Basic says that they are not equal. They're completely different things. So we have to use the trim method to remove spaces before and after non-space characters. So leading spaces, spaces at the very, very beginning of the string, and trailing spaces, which are spaces at the very end. Some quick examples. Um, what we have right here is we're taking the state uh, text box, we're taking the text out of there, we're trimming it so we get rid of any leading and trailing spaces, and then uppercase it, and then after all that we compare it to the string CA. So we're really making sure that we've tried to eliminate every possible user error that we could, and at that point if there's still issues like extra letters or different letters than CA, then that's their own fault, right? But we've done what we try, like what we can. Or uh, setting the string city equal to uh, the text box where the user inputs the city, take that text property, we trim it, and then we set it to all uppercase using the to upper method. So you can actually, by the way, you can chain properties and methods like this. And what happens is Visual Studio essentially goes left to right. It evaluates text state. It's like, okay, what is text state? It finds out what text state is and says, okay, I have this text box control now. The user's trying to access the text property, whatever's inside of the text property. So it finds the text property, it gets the string out of there, and now it's holding the string. And now it says, okay, now they want to do the string.trim method. So they invoke dot trim. It gives a new string, by the way. It doesn't uh, modify the old string, kind of like what two upper and two lower do. But it, it invokes two string, and it creates a new string with all the leading and trailing spaces removed. And now it's holding that. And this is, okay, well now this string, they're trying to get the to upper method going. So then it converts everything to uppercase, throws out the old string, and it takes this new string, and that's what it's holding. And now it says, okay, and now I compare it to this other string literal CA. That's what's happening right here. It's going left to right. By the way, I should say, if a string doesn't have any leading or trailing spaces, dot trim does nothing, but it does create a new string. It just doesn't like crash or anything. You're totally fine to use it on a string without leading your trailing spaces. It just, it will it just functionally act exactly the same, including the creation of the new string. Now it's helpful if you're using the trim and to upper and to lower methods for user input to store all that in a variable so you don't have to do it constantly. You can leave the user input as is. You don't have to worry about changing it or anything. It's very efficient because you're not doing that work every single time you need to check user input, you can just sort it in the variable and then keep on working with it. Sort of like why it's helpful to convert, say, a double from a text box into a double, or you know, a numerical string from a text box into, say, a double. Store that in, in a double variable and then never touch the text box again, and you just keep on using the double variable because you don't have to do that conversion ever again. So it's a lot more efficient that way. For example, um, making things a little more efficient with the, like a previous example, right? Instead of comparing to upper directly to the string literal CA, sort it in stir state and then use uh, if stir state equals California. And the nice thing about that, you know, it's less efficient the first time you do it. But then every additional time you get a lot of efficiency back out of that, which is really helpful. And then you know, if you ever accidentally modify source state or whatever, the information is still in text state dot text unchanged, so you can just grab it again. Although, best to not modify source state in the first place unless you really need to. Okay, so that's string comparisons. Um, I didn't so much uh, cover the string use of less than or greater than like that stuff that we saw in the key press examples in the previous video, um, because there isn't a ton to talk about. It essentially relies on using uh, different 
characters of the strings binary values. It'll go left to right comparing the binary values until it figures out which one is greater and which one is less, or until it finds a pair that is not equal or something like that. But to really use that for the most part, you would actually have to probably consult something like a Unicode table, which is really annoying, and I don't think you need to worry about that right now. The key press event is helpful because it shows like, okay, well, all the characters are next to each other. So you can use less than zero or greater than nine, you know, less than the string containing zero or greater than the string containing nine in order to filter out things that are not numerical digits. Or you could do that with all the lowercase letters because all the lowercase letters are adjacent. Also, all the uppercase letters are adjacent. However, the uppercase and lowercase letters are not adjacent to each other. So you'd have to say, uh, you know, less than the letter A, lowercase, greater than the letter Z, or less than lowercase A, uh, or uppercase A, greater than uppercase C, whatever. Um, but that's not, I think, as relevant for this as string equality and inequality is, especially with those notes about two upper, two lower, and trimming, and all that. So that's why I wanted to talk about string comparisons specifically.